Hey everybody, welcome back to Collect and Reflect, and today I am here to talk about The Last of Us again. So we took a look at what the show was looking like review-wise with Rotten Tomatoes and some of the other websites that are prominent in reviews like Empire, Collider, Hollywood Reporter, etc. That were all giving this show really good, really rave reviews before it was out and released to the general public. I was skeptical. I was excited that those early reviews were really positive, but I was skeptical just because this is a game that I care about a lot. It is one of my favorite stories, so I wanted them to get it right. And now I have finally seen episodes one, and I have seen episode two. That was just released this past Sunday, and I didn't want to do a review video right away after episode one because it was a longer episode. It was about an hour and 20 minutes, and it was the intro to the game basically but put into episode form and I didn't feel like there was enough to talk about there was there was certainly enough that I could say about it but I wanted the story to get going a little bit and see how people felt and then let myself do a review kind of on episode one and two as a whole now I've got a really good idea of what this show is going to be about and how they're going to proceed so without further ado here's my review of The Last of Us on HBO, episodes one and two. Spoilers ahead if you haven't seen it, so at this point, if you don't want spoilers, go ahead and click away and come back once you've seen the episode. And I'm not doing a breakdown or anything, just really giving my thoughts on this. So episode one, overall, fantastic. I mean, I think I give this episode, I give it like an A-. I mean, it's a really good show. I think, I can't believe how good of a job that they have done portraying the way that I felt when I played the game for the first time compared to the way that I felt when I watched the show. The opening of the show being a seminar about how um, the dangers of the fungal world to humans in in the 1960s was such a great touch. It just sets this, this tone of uh, suspense that then leads to our introduction to the characters. I think they did a great job in showing how the outbreak began, how it started in the in the town in Texas where they're from initially. It was extremely active, action-packed and hectic for like a good 15 minutes there after the outbreak finally hits and Joel comes home to take Sarah out of there with Tommy and they're escaping. So that was great. That was fantastic. And then, honestly, I felt the show, it slowed down a lot after that. So leading episode one after the big, once we get the 20 year time jump, it slowed down a lot there for me and then kind of got its strength again in the, in the latter, like 15 to 20 minutes or so of the episode. And for me, the first episode was so faithful to the game that I actually found myself, I don't want to say bored, but it's just, I knew every little thing that was going to happen. And even though there was like slight tweaks here and there, it still wasn't like, you know, nothing was a shock to me. So while that's great, and I'm so glad that people who have never played the game get to see that, while that's great for me as a viewer, as somebody that has played the games already, I was, I don't want to say disappointed, I was just, it was surprising that the fact that it was so close to the game actually maybe made me enjoy the first episode a little bit less, just because I knew what to expect. And I don't want to say I enjoyed it less. It was just like it didn't feel that new to me. It felt like, yeah, I know. This is great. I've seen this before. And and you know what? That's really a good thing. So like I said, I give the episode an A- because it, it was really good. It was so faithful to the games. And they did a great job. And it was a really fun episode. But not, you know, all the way to an A or an A+. Just because there was like a middle section that I felt went a little bit slow. The episode was an hour and 20 minutes. And I felt like could have been just rounded off at about like, you know, 50, to, 50 minutes to an hour. So episode two comes in super strong. I liked episode two better than episode one for, for pacing reasons mainly. Um, I, I think those parts of the story are equally important, but episode two really brought the pacing that felt like, you know, an HBO show, like the way that you're used to it. So rather than feeling like I was watching a movie that was more drawn out in certain areas, I felt the pacing was appropriate. It, it wasn't all action packed. A lot of it was character building and slow burn you know, slow burn style suspense, but still in those like 40 to 50 minutes that episode two was, I felt like it was just 
much better pacing. I don't. I didn't feel like there was any fluff or filler added to the episode. So I give episode two an A plus for sure. Episode two was fantastic, and another reason why I'm giving episode two an A plus is because of the changes. Now, I've heard online in a few places that some people are not happy with some of the changes from the game story to the story that they saw in episode two. But to me, those changes are subtle enough to just make it that much more enjoyable to me somebody who has played the first game probably a dozen times at this point and I know that story through and through like the back of my hand so anytime there's going to be a little bit of difference or or the show just the events play out just a little bit differently that's actually exciting for me as a viewer because the show is already doing well it's it's being developed well it's directed well it's written well so it's a good show I'm enjoying it. So when there's a little bit of differences here and there, it actually, it allows me to be surprised. It allows me to wonder what's going to happen. So the big changes being we get to see what the difference is between the spores and the tendrils in The Last of Us on HBO versus The Last of Us, the game. So in episode two, we find out that the infected are kind of like this hive network and they're probably not, you know, connected all over the world, but in these kind of like pods of connected you know, hives, and we saw, like, you know, just a, a swarm all piled up, just kind of waiting for something to happen, and, you know, stepping on a, you know, a tendril here, or when one sees you over there, then the rest of them know where you were, that added a huge element of suspense for me, and just kind of made it seem like, wow, like, you are really unsafe in this world of HBO's The Last of Us at all times because even if you get away from one, a swarm can easily catch up to you because now they're communicating with each other. And I think that that is something that set it apart from The Walking Dead finally. So a lot of people have been saying that, hey, this is a zombie apocalypse drama. It's going to be very similar to The Walking Dead, especially because it's very character focused, just like The Walking Dead is, where, yeah, the zombies are definitely a threat in The Walking Dead, but it's really the interaction between characters, good guys or bad guys, that make the show great. And The Last of Us, you could say the same thing about The Last of Us, you know, comparing that to The Infected, but the way that they presented the hive and the tendrils and the slight differences in episode two. I think that was great. Just really sets it apart. It's this isn't, you know, slow roaming zombies. You know, you can get away from one or two and, and you know, pick a city apart and get out if you have to. Uh, you make one wrong turn and, uh, you know, an entire building of infected could be coming after you like we saw in the episode. So one big change at the end of, uh, at the, end of the episode of episode two was that Tess goes out in her blaze of glory just like the game. However, in the game, it was Fedra agents who were still following you from when you escaped the Boston QZ that end up ambushing you at the Capitol building. And in the game, it was a swarm. And that's that's like a nothing difference to me. You know, being shot at by a bunch of guys versus ripped apart by the infected. Yeah, I honestly would rather have to deal with, you know, being shot <laughs> than have like the Tess's outcome in the show was a lot more gruesome, honestly, and I think more impactful, especially given what they were going through. You know, they're they're talking about how they're they're bad people at this point, Tess and Joel. They admit to that. And that's what they've had to do to survive. And now Tess is latching on to what she at that point truly, truly believes might actually be their salvation, not just for mankind, but for for saving what little is left of their humanity that they've had to leave behind to survive. And she's trying to impart that on Joel. And I think they did a great job of capturing that in the game. And they did a fantastic job of acting that out and writing that for the TV show. So I give the episode an A plus all the way. And Ellie is is growing on me. I like Bella Ramsey as uh, as an actor, and I think that they've done a fantastic job in Game of Thrones and, you know, other things that they've done. I just, after, after episode one, I wasn't completely sold on Bella's portrayal of Ellie. I think that Bella was doing a good job, just not a fantastic job, and Ellie was a really big character, but I think it's, it's coming out. I think that, uh, you know, Bella didn't have a lot of screen time in episode one, but episode two... Finally, you're seeing some of the comedy, the uh, the joke about checking in at the hotel, ringing the bell, and having some a joke with Joel saying, you know, you're a weird kid. You're a weird kid. That was a good moment. And 
those are the moments that build their relationship really rather than you know having to survive it's the little moments in between where they get to share their actual humanity so overall episode one i give it an a minus episode two i give it an a plus we're finally seeing what this show can really be and now it's going to be joel and ellie on their own now so they're moving along and they're trying to get to bill and frank's which is the next destination in the game as well. So we're still following right along. And there's going to be some a lot more. I'm excited by episode three because of the, we're, we're getting a whole backstory on Bill and Frank and how they put the town together with all their traps and just how they got to be the way that they are when we find them in the game. Because in the game, we never see Frank. We hear about Frank. Well, we see Frank, but no spoilers on how we see Frank. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited for the episode because there's going to be a lot of differences. Not necessarily differences, just backstory and and more of an arc for bill and frank than we got in the game even though that was one of the best parts of the game is uh, bill anyway so i'm excited for that i hope you guys are excited for that too i hope you enjoyed our review i am so curious if you watched the show if you played the game either way let me know what you thought let me know if you think my review sucks <laughs> and you totally disagree that's fine we should disagree on things that's what makes you know entertainment great so let us know we want to we want to have a conversation with you all so without further ado if you enjoyed watching that's awesome thank you keep watching our content if you want more i'll probably do a review like every two or three episodes because i want to kind of do these in chunks because it feels better than doing one every sunday because then you kind of get burnt out on the review so yeah stick around for more um and i hope you're enjoying the last of us and if you haven't start watching it i highly recommend it otherwise see you in the next one